Hi there, Daniel here from the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey, figuring we would do a species spotlight for you guys today with one of our swallowtail kites. First off, let's give you a little bit of background about swallowtail kites as a species before we go into our individual resident that we have with us. Swallowtail kites are a migratory raptor that'll come to the southeast United States right around February for nesting period. They'll have communal roosts in South America and here in Florida of hundreds to thousands of swallowtail kites all hanging out in the same area. When they do finally have a mate, they'll build a nest up in cypress trees or in palm trees about 60 feet up in the air. Around the edge of the nest, they'll actually line them with Spanish moss and other lichens, so it's a nice soft material for their young to hang out in. As they're incubating those eggs, it'll take about 30 days for those eggs to incubate. Once they hatch, it takes about another 30 to 40 days before those babies fledge. The diet of swallowtail kites primarily is comprised of flying insects, so dragonflies, damselflies, moths, butterflies. They'll also go after stinging insects, so wasps and bees. These guys are agile enough to snatch all these insects out of the air. But when they do have their nests, when they do have those babies, they will go after more vertebrate food. So they've been known to go after frogs, snakes, even nestlings from other nests. One really interesting fact uh, is that in South America, when insects and vertebrate food is kind of scarce, there have been reports of swallowtail kites actually eating fruits down there. These guys are agile enough that when they need a drink, they'll actually get it on the wing. So you'll see swallowtail kites skim the surface of a large body of water and drink on the go. Other migratory flying birds will do this as well. Swallowtail kites are also known for their migration. So their migration will they'll leave here in Florida around August. They'll fly southward, fall, flying over the Gulf of Mexico itself, and they'll follow into Central America, into the Amazon Basin, and then they'll hang out there during the non-breeding season. Then when it comes back to the breeding season, they'll go the reverse route. We've actually had researchers follow these guys and transmitter packs to actually monitor that migration. Because we can do as much as we can to protect them here, but once these guys travel to other places, it's a lot of effort and a lot of resources to protect those habitats where they live as well. A couple years back, we even helped out with the rehabilitation of one swallowtail kite, who we called as a popka. And a popka has been actually helping out researchers through ARCC with a transmitter that is now back out in the wild. So if you ever get a chance, you can check out a popka story. If you want to identify swallowtail kites from home, the easiest way will be when these guys are flying around. They very rarely will flap their wings, so they'll have a very distinctive silhouette pattern, and they'll have a very distinctive V-shaped tail that you can kind of see. Oh, there you go. Just like this. Except you'll see it from the underside, so you'll see that nice white on their belly and that very distinctive forked tail that they have. When you're out birding and you see one that has a little bit of brown colorations, you're not going crazy. That's still a swallowtail kite. It's just a juvenile. Uh, one of our uh, staff members here calls them as toasted marshmallows, what they look like. You'll see a little bit of brown feathers mixed in with the white coloration on them. When it comes to Gretel here, our resident that I've been holding, uh, he came to us as a little hatchling about two years ago, uh, right that could fit in the palm of our hands. A family found him that had fallen out of a nest, and they kept him over the weekend to make sure that he was nice and healthy. Unfortunately, during that time period, he did get imprinted. So once a bird is imprinted, they no longer can associate themselves with their own species. So he thinks of himself as a weird looking human or as us as weird looking birds. But once a bird is imprinted, there's no way to reverse that process. So we are his forever home and he can join us on programs, tours, or even coming to meet you guys through the power of the internet now.